in ourselves. So, thanks for being here in Rome. The first time, no? First time? Yeah, it's my first time here, yeah. And the Olimpico, so it's a good stadium. A good stadium, a good city, good people. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, it's an honor and privilege for us to uh, be joining mm -hmm. here and uh, uh, discussing, uh, you know, uh, how we see uh, uh, football and how we uh, are uh, trying to transform our uh, football in general in Saudi Arabia and specifically the Saudi uh, professional league. Yeah, and we start from there, <laughs> if yep. you want. Yeah, um, how things started, um, which was the purpose, which are the objectives. Yeah, if you can talk us through what, uh, you know, uh, yeah, which were the, uh, the initial idea and where are you going? Uh, we are worried here in Europe, eh? huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Um, Football in general in Saudi Arabia is, is a passion of the Saudi people. It's nothing new to us. Uh, we bo we've been enjoying a living football for uh, the past 50, 60 years. And Saudi Pro League uh, is, is uh, you know, such as every other aspect of life, is undergoing a transformation as part of uh, the Saudi Arabian Fijian 2030. Yes. Um, out of that came uh, a huge program called the Quality of Life, uh, which the sports is a huge uh, and a major contributor to. Um, we have we have a, what we call a, a Saudi football strategy. Uh, part of that is the Saudi Brody transformation strategy. Uh, this strategy was we started to develop this strategy in the first half of 2022. Uh, implementation started at the end of 22. Uh, 22, yes, uh, uh, during the World Cup, and you know, we're starting to see some aspects of the transformations and some of the pillars uh, that we uh, built into our strategy, uh, part of which is what we call the player acquisition center of excellence, uh, club development framework, uh, better governance, and better league operations as a whole. So uh, this is where we are and this is where, where this comes from. And what does it mean, the Vision 2030, for, you know, if you explain it to us, and uh, where does it, football and sport, come into the picture? Okay, so, so um, that's, that's a country-wide vision uh, that aims to transform Saudis in a lot of aspects, uh, economical, social, uh, and all of that. Under the vision, there are... Uh, 13 programs, uh, one of which is what we call quality of life program. Um, you know, uh, all entertainment, sports activity go under that uh, specific program. Uh, sports is in the heart of it. Saudi Arabia is, is investing to transform uh, its sport uh, to be a major player and a contributor uh, to, the, to the global sports scene. Uh, we, uh, as, as you can see, um, hosting lots of events. Yes. Uh, we mm -hmm. are betting for uh, lots of tournament, not only in football, but uh, yeah. Many in, sports. In, yeah, in sports in general. Yeah. Uh, and and um, we want to give our young people uh, something to enjoy and something to be proud of. And this is where we come from. Um, let me tell the, the audience something. It's, I've been there for one week in August, and uh, I have been to, uh, to the World Cup in, uh, in Doha, in Qatar. And there is a, the biggest difference I saw is uh, that uh, Saudi Arabia is a football country. Um, despite the weather, it was very hot, uh, people were playing, you know, in the streets, in the pitches, every day. So um, I think this is something that perhaps people mm, don't understand or don't know here in Europe. But you are a sporting country, you are a football country, no? Yes, uh, I think by our count, 80% of the Saudi people either attend, watch, or play football. And um, the country, the majority portion of the country is under 30. So uh, yeah. Yeah. it is indeed a football country. It's a sports country in general. Participation in sports in general in Saudi Arabia has picked up between 2016 up to now by more than um, maybe two folds. So wow. uh, that's, that's a big jump uh, as part of the transformation that the country is, is undergoing right now. And talking about a big jump, you were mentioning before the end of uh, 2022, that's when after the World Cup, 
you got Cristiano Ronaldo, no? And we are talking about the Cristiano Ronaldo effect. What happened there? And uh, you know, how do you see it now after what uh, 10 months, 11 months? Okay. Oh. <laughs> so before I speak about that specific question, I'll, I'll, I'll take you back to uh, how this is all got started. Um, mm -hmm. The player acquisition and bringing top talented players into Saudi is 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 part of um, a well developed integrated plan by the Saudi Pro League. Uh, so part of it is trying to get into the market and bring in top talent into Saudi Arabia to contribute to the overall development of the league, uh, to contribute to the overall growth of the league, and to influence uh, the younger generation of players in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is done in, in coordination with the Saudi Arabian Football Federation and other sporting bodies in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's acquisition is part of that program. Uh, it opened the gate for us and it, in some aspects, made our uh, job a bit easier when we went to the market to speak to the other uh, stars that you see now playing in Saudi Arabia. And uh, on term, in terms of passion of what he brought, you know, to the um, to the football, to, uh, apart from from the people and the supporters, he's, he's also still a great player, and he's, he's helping you a lot in, under this aspect. I, I, I think one of the things is, um, you know, b before him coming, I'll, I'll speak about my personal experience. You know, you see these stars on TV and, and you dream one day of maybe taking a picture of them or get a signed jersey. And when you see them in real life next to you on the streets in, in, in Riyadh, I think it lifted the spirit of the whole league. Yeah. That we can do this. We can bring in top talent player and they can find a place to live and contribute to the uh, Saudi Arabian community and this is the biggest impact that he's having he's also having an impact on his teammates the younger yeah. Saudi players playing in his team so that's he's a good role model for our players to see him and see how much he invested in himself yeah. uh, to become the star he is right now and the human he is right now yeah. so. um, we're talking about uh, you know the the investments that are underway and uh, that accelerating the growth process. No? Um, which are the, the major challenges you know, to achieve your goals? Uh, and we can specify which, which are your goals too. So uh, our goal is clear. Um, we want to be the best we can be. We want to be the best version of ourselves. Uh, I know, uh, you I think, know. I think this is important. Is to, Yes, and, and you know, I, I know there are ranked leagues, and we know who the top five leagues are, and they are all uh, here in Europe. Uh, we're not trying to compete with anybody. We just want to be the best we can be. And um, by the way, we, we use the experiences that Europe has in its top five leagues. We have great relationships with all of the leagues, all of the clubs. We sit down all, all the time. We exchange ideas, and you know, in, in many aspects, we also. Uh, exchange experiences and we work with them uh, hand in hand to develop football. Uh, so we talk about the challenges, this is uh, in my opinion a, a long term journey. Mm -hmm. um, you have to stay the course, you have to adjust as you go, uh, you cannot lose track of your goal and one day you will make it. Uh, whether I'll become a top 5 league, a top 10 league, uh, you know that really matters to us where we are in the global map but we want to be the best we can be, yeah. whatever that is. And uh, you're working inside the country too, because you know, stadium, um, infra infrastructures. Uh, what, what are you doing to achieve your goals for your country? Okay, so, you know, I can, I can speak about several things. Um, some of it is, is the duty of. Uh, the Saudi Arabian Football Federation, some of it is yeah. SPL, and some of it is... Uh, you are together, no? You... Closely. Oh. I mean, we, we have a great relationship uh, between us and, 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 of course, our uh, superior... Because this sports. is not always the case in Europe, eh, that uh, it's, it's <laughs> league and federation. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not the case everywhere, but yeah. we happen to have, we are blessed to be having a good relationship with the Saudi Arabian Football Federation. Um, from their side, they, they are working on the development of the you know, wider football ecosystem. Uh, we support them in their strategy. We, uh, 
you know, there is a lot of, you know, I would say an overlap, a positive one, between what they're trying to do and what we're trying to uh, achieve as well. So the vision is one, the tools we use, whether it's the federation and, you know, um, it's jurisdiction or whether it's the league and its development, uh, end of the day, we aim for the same goal. Yeah. Now, um, in the summer, you made you know, a big investment. Um, we were talking before, around 90 new players, foreign players, apart from the local players, came to the Saudi Pro League. Um, which is the balance after, what, five, six months? Eh, five months, more or less, or even less. Uh, what do you, yeah, where do you stand? Are you happy from... So, uh, you know, for phase one of the project, I think we have achieved uh, good results. You know, some people might claim it's great results. Uh, the program was able to acquire 89 players to Saudi this summer in about 69 days. Uh, <laughs> that's a huge number. Uh, average of 1.5 players per day. day. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> that's one. Uh, in terms of viewership, um, Saudi Pro League, I think from week one to week nine, has jumped into viewership to about by 28% from last year, which also witnessed the jump last year because Cristiano came in the second half. Yeah. Week. Yeah. So that's another jump that we achieved. Attendance in Saudi has jumped by about uh, 16 to 17% in stadium attendance. Uh, we are being watched in about 170, 180 yes. uh, countries. Um, sponsorship numbers for the league, the central sponsorship, have jumped by 2.5 to 3 times. Uh, so, you know, in terms of the overall results, the media value, I, I don't have the exact number, but the media value that we generated uh, from June up to the end of October is, is unheard of. I mean, it's a huge number. Uh, maybe I can supply you with the number at a later stage. So, you know, if you, if you, if you ask... Am I happy? Yes, we are happy. Uh, do we think we have done enough? No, we haven't done enough. We are just getting started, and we will continue to be, uh, you know, a force in in in, uh, in the market, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, work to the overall development and growth of football globally. Yeah, and uh, what do you think is the the, the, the perception of the fans around the world of um, about the SPL? Uh, so, I, I, I can use a story that happened yesterday. <laughs> I, I, uh, so, a Roman story. Uh, yeah, it's a story in this city. I, I get into my hotel about 3 or 4 p.m. I ask my, my colleague here, Abdulaziz, to, uh, if we can go to the city center. You uh, said, said it, said it. You know it. In Italian? Yes. Uh, is it Centro Sterka? Well done. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, we went there, a taxi driver, He's a Lazio fan, by the way. Um, <laughs> he, he, tell me, he asked me, where, where are you from? So I tell him I'm from Saudi Arabia. And then he started mentioning clubs' names in Saudi Arabia. And the players are playing in them, and he knows everything, and he watches Channel 7, is it? Uh, yes, is La it Channel 7. La 7. Ah, yeah, okay, so, so, so <laughs> yeah. this is, you know, perception. And, and we hear many stories. You weren't like expecting that. that? No, not at all, not at all. It's complete stranger to me. And he speaks about my league. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know that I work for the league. He's just telling me just a casual story. So uh, uh, in terms of the reach that we have been able to achieve, we are happy with that. Yeah. Uh, we don't think it's enough. It's just the beginning. And, uh, you know, there's more to come. Uh, we'll continue to put the work into it. Uh, we'll continue to improve our uh, work and methodologies and uh, strategies in order for us to achieve uh, the maximum we can achieve. Yeah, this is one of the areas where possibly you have to uh, you know, work a lot because it's uh, you fight against you know big powers of uh, European football. Huh? Yeah, so. it's, uh, you know I, we work closely with with uh, all. Uh, uh, European, yeah, leagues. European Top leagues. Top five, we just met them last month at the World League Forum. We have a great coordination with them. Uh, we are going to continue to, to engage with them and uh, hopefully we can uh, align on, on all matters. Uh, and uh, yes, our, our, our doors are open and we would like to see the same from, from everybody else. Yeah. 
There is a lot of talk about uh, Champions League. Uh, I don't know if you are working with uh, UEFA too. You know, there is, uh, you know, always rumors uh, about uh, the possibility of uh, SPL teams joining the Champions League. I don't know if, if, if it's true. How do you see things? Uh, or how are you working with UEFA or not? Uh, as a league, we don't have any interaction with, with, with federations. Um, uh, this is a matter for the Saudi Arabian Football Federation. I'm not aware of any discussions, official or none, that are taking place between us and the UEFA. I'm not aware of it. And um, um, what about, uh, uh, you, you know, the worries that, uh, you know, you are uh, accused of spending a lot, uh, lots of investment, uh, and what do you respond to that, uh, you especially know, from Europe, uh, where well, we spend a lot of money too, but this is... <laughs> okay, there are two sides to this. Um, I think most of our investment this summer went to the top five European leagues yes. and some other non-top five European leagues. Yeah. So that's, that's an investment for us. We invested in the Premier League, French League, Spanish League, Italian League. Everybody benefited from our investment. Um, yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's um, for the good of everybody that we made that investment. So. Um, you know, did we spend a lot of money, such as, you know, when you, when you get into a new market and you want to go to a different quality category uh, in anything, then you're going to have to spend a bit more than everybody else. And, you know, it's a challenge for us uh, in the beginning, but we think, you know, if we overcompensated in this window, okay, at some point this will level down, uh, this league will become attractive by itself, and it will be a hub and destination for football stars in the future. Yeah, and uh, you know, to support what you are saying, uh, in this international weekend, the, the, the games that are played now by the national teams, SPL provided 45 players. 44, 45, yes. Yeah, this is a, a huge number. And That's I don't know, to be honest, I don't know the figures before, but to me, 45 uh, players uh, in the national teams, it's, uh, so this is what you were looking for. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe, maybe some of the people only know the top players. Yeah. But no, there, no. Are, there are non-top players who are contributing to their national team. Yes. So uh, we even have national team players in the first division, not only in the SPL. Yeah. So um, we are contributing. Because you want, yeah, you want to raise the level. No? And you know, one of the areas where, where this acquisition program helps Saudi football is to filter out talent, to make sure that the clubs who they bring, of course, such as everything else in life, you make the investment it might succeed, it might not. You bring in a good player, scouts say he's good, technical team says he's good, you get him in there, and he doesn't work out, you know, whether it's, you know. Yeah. But in general, we did all of the due diligence that we can to make sure that whoever comes in the league can contribute in a positive way to the league. Yeah, also because uh, there, were, there was the idea that players coming to your league would be kind of uh, forgotten by, you know, the national teams. And this number is telling exactly the contrary. 100%. You know, you, you see, you see our, our... Well, I think there are players who were called up to their national team maybe for the first, second time after they joined the Saudi League. Exactly. So it's, it's exactly the opposite. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody being dropped out of the national team because he came into Saudi. And I, I don't think this will be the case. This is a very competitive league. Uh, and, and, you know, the level of play that we have right now, uh, of course, is not our ultimate, you know, goal, but it's, it's getting up there. Yeah. And um, what about women's football? Which is the vision and what are you doing on the, this subject? Uh, if, you, if you look a few years back, we, we had no uh, women league. Now we have a... Women League is 16 teams, about 80 matches, 400 players. Uh, we have a, a FIFA-ranked National Women League. Uh, we, we are, you know, opening up venues for um, female athletes in Saudi Arabia to take part and participate, whether it's in the coaching, coaching staff, uh, you know, uh, administration part of football. So um, this is something that, uh, you know, Saudi has been doing in the overall vision. We have increased the participation of women in workplace from, I guess, about 80, 70% to uh, 17% to about 31%. So um, 
it's, it's a, an integral uh, part of, of, of the transformation of the Saudi society. And you're taking care of these, uh, you know, quite deeply from what I've seen. In... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's 100% uh, something that we do. I mean, uh, people responsible for the league are, are working uh, right now into uh, even setting up the league at a, a higher professional level. Uh, it's being broadcasted, by the way. You can, you can, it could be watched on TV now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 and before it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. yeah. <laughs> Things are so, changing. Yeah. yeah. And um, um, we always mention uh, the Vision 2030, but uh, at the moment, uh, Saudi Arabia is the only bidder for the World Cup 2034. Um, yeah. Which are your plans? Uh, and yeah, uh, how you are extending, uh, theoretically, the Vision 2030 up to the World Cup? Uh, which is the, the situation at the moment? How do you see the bid? I think, I think uh, Saudi Arabia is uh, the only bid right now. Uh, we have not, yeah, I, th I, think, I think the official results of the bid will not be coming now. I think at some point in 2024. Yeah. Um, in general, um, it's a goal of us to be known uh, to host big international events especially when it comes to sports. So uh, I guess the World Cup and, and the Olympics maybe uh, are the biggest of, of, of all. Yeah. 2027, we're also hosting the Asian Cup. For the first time. Uh, for the first time, yeah. yeah. So uh, Before are, you have to try to win it in, in January, yeah? <laughs> we'll talk about that in a... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's in Qatar. So yeah. uh, we have won it in Qatar back in 1988. Yeah. So uh, we, we could repeat that. <laughs> So, uh, so you were saying, sorry, I interrupted the USA. So the, the, the Asian Cup and then from the there? Cup. But in between, there are several dozens of sports tournaments uh, and events that Saudi is hosting. So it's becoming normal now for people to see these big events in Saudi. And uh, uh, it's a huge driver for us that we are, you know, uh, we keep on working on it uh, until uh, we achieve our goal for, to be known for, to be known as a hub uh, for the sports yeah. and sports event. Yeah, this is, uh, you were talking about the national team. Uh, you have an Italian manager. He was a uh, year at Lazio for many years. <laughs> you can, once you are here, you, are not, you don't work for the federation, but you work in collaboration yeah. with them. How do you see the progress uh, and the appointment of Mancini? Of course, uh, a big name like Mancini is... Uh, Today you are playing eh, against uh -huh. Jordan. Eh? Today they are playing against Jordan. I yeah. think in a couple of hours, maybe, yeah. they're yeah. playing against you Jordan. You beat so. Pakistan 4-0? 4-0. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia come from, from um, a, you know, a deep football history. Um, we have, uh, you know, one minute trophies at the Asian level. We have been to, uh, uh, I guess, six World Cups right now. Yes. Uh, these are becoming normal for us, you know. Hiring... Uh, you know, an icon like Mancini also uh, hopefully will contribute to the bigger development of the Saudi national team and Saudi football in general. Uh, our colleagues in, in SAF are uh, doing an amazing job uh, in trying to bring uh, the best and only the best. I, I guess Yaya Touré was also hired uh, as, as his assistant. Yeah. Uh, the, and and uh, uh, we can only, uh, you know, pray that the uh, Saudi national team will uh, do better and better in, in uh, this qualifiers and future tournaments. Yeah. We are almost finishing our time, so I think we can uh, have, a, you know, the last look at the January market transfer. So you said uh, you had uh, 89 or 90 players in what it was, uh, 30, 60 yeah. days. What, uh, what will happen in January? So, uh, in the program in general, coordinating between, you know, central acquisition of the program and the clubs is, is a, I'm not going to say complicated, but it's a detailed process. Um, in general, and I think this is the case for everybody around the world, uh, winter is not a busy period for the transfers. Yeah. Uh, we don't think this winter uh, will be a busy one for us. Uh, we expect some teams to be asking for uh, a player at the most, you know, for injury improvement. This is normal in football. So, but in, in general, we don't expect big movement for the winter. And the summer? I, uh, 
if summer will be coming again, you ask me again and answer, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was it was a pleasure to have you to have Thank you here. You. It's you. Uh, it's interesting to hear what what you are trying to do to achieve. And you you fight with uh, you know big leagues and mm. uh, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Th you. Thanks to you. Grazie a tutti, eh? Spero sia stato interessante. Hope you enjoyed this panel. We will discuss more in detail about this. Thank you.